What type of a raw food diet should you choose for yourself? And most importantly, what type of a raw food diet can you maintain long term to get the best results for your health, for your hormones, for your weight, for your energy levels? Let's dive in and explore. Hi there, it's Paul and Yulia Tarf here, certified holistic nutritionist with over 10 years of experience, helping you get healthy hormones, healthy weight, and the body of your dreams naturally. If you're brand new here, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. So we discovered the raw food diet in the year of 2009, so over a decade ago. And I discovered it first because of my health issues and search and not knowing what else I could try to help me restore my reoccurring candida, severe fatigue, hormonal imbalances, fertility issues, and fluctuating weight and emotions and so forth. And when we came across the raw food diet, we came across a high fruit lifestyle plan, but there are many different lifestyle plans. And I think you need to understand what they are so you can make the best choice for yourself with regards to restoring your health. And let's face it, if you are looking to switch to a raw food diet, you have probably already tried other diets. You are probably already more educated than a lot of other people in the field of nutrition because you understand that that's the next step from all the steps that you've made already. So obviously you're more committed to yourself and you're more committed to your health, yet you still need to make the right choices and you need to realize that there are certain mistakes that you want to avoid. So let's go over different types of raw food diets first. So Paul, do you want to dive in? Yeah, so let's dive into the first one. That's fruitarianism. So basically this is a raw food diet where people basically eat fruit. So they're fruitarians, they focus on fruit, so that's going to be things like obviously bananas, grapes, watermelons, melons, mangoes, papayas, uh, depending on what part of the world you might be eating, things like durians and um, jackfruits, all, kinds of, fruit, all kinds of different fruit. You basically, eat fruit. Yeah. And you can also eat cucumbers and tomatoes because those are also considered fruit. Got seeds. So you eat fruit only. And by the way, we've created the special free one day hormone reset plan with strategies and recipes to help you implement the raw foods lifestyle the right way, grab yourself a copy. And there are some people who have been able to maintain this lifestyle long term. Most people will not. And while it's a good diet to cleanse your body, it's a really good diet to help you cleanse your body and maintain short term, we don't think that it's a good diet for you to follow long term. And uh, we can go into some of the reasons why. Obviously, fruit's really good for you. It's full of natural sugars. It's got lots of fiber, it's got the antioxidants in there, it's got vitamins and minerals. But when you eat just fruit, there's a lot of really healthy foods you're leaving out, which have so many beneficial aspects to them. So leaving out lots of leafy greens, well leafy greens, they're so healthy for you. They've got lots of uh, fiber in them as well, but they've got lots of B vitamins, lots of folate, lots of vitamin K, lots of minerals like calcium and iron. And you're protein as well. Protein yeah. as well, absolutely. And you're missing out on all of those because you're totally excluding that from your diet. So then you're just relying on fruit. And then you can run into you know, problems with your nutrition because you're getting too low intake of minerals because fruits aren't typically high in minerals. So And also protein. And protein. So this is where you can run into problems. So this is why we definitely don't recommend just doing a fruit diet Long, for a long term. term, you can do a cleanse. There's nothing wrong with doing a, a cleanse, a fruit cleanse, fruit diet cleanse, but maintaining it long term, no, it's not the diet that we would recommend. It's not the diet that we consider healthy, and it's not the diet that we have followed ourselves. Okay, so the second one is gourmet raw, or you can call it high fat raw food diet. So this is going to include lots of things like avocados in it, nuts and seeds, nuts and seeds coconut flesh, you know, lots of really fatty foods. And it's delicious. Oh, it can be very delicious. And it yeah. can be very delicious because you're able to replace a lot of foods that perhaps you loved in the past, like bread, you can make crackers and uh, you, had, you love pizzas and you can make raw vegan pizzas and it's all very flavor rich and a lot of flavors go into it. But it has a big, very big downside it is too high in fat. Yes, it's a raw food diet. Yes, it's a raw vegan diet. Of course, it's healthier than a lot of other diets that uh, people can follow and you can follow, but it's a high fat diet. What's the complication of that? Well, high fat diet is not great for your digestion for sure because your body uses a lot of blood flow, a lot of energy to digest your food. So if there's a lot of fat, which is typically 
heavy to digest. It's going to take a long time to do that. It's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to pull that energy from you. It's also going to get into your bloodstream. Obviously, if you're eating a lot of fat continually, it's going to be floating around your bloodstream all the time. That can cause issues with blood, blood sugar, sugar problems, problems, for example. If and you're, candida as well. Yeah, and candida as well. So, you know, if you've got blood sugar problems, pre-diabetes or type 2 diabetes, that's not a, a good option for you. And as you said, you know, candida, things like that, that can cause it or make it get worse. And another thing with a, with a high fat diet is that you can run into problems with too much omega-6 and too little omega-3. So you're eating a lot of fats and you're eating a lot of nuts and seeds uh, that are high in omega-6. So you can run into omega-3 to 6 imbalances. And you can also start experiencing problems with your energy levels eventually because you're just not getting enough sugars healthy sugars from fruit uh healthy whole carbohydrates which we which is what we're meant to eat what's our body run on glucose glucose what exactly. you get in fruits lots so, of glucose and you're not even able to eat it because you're you have so much fat in your in in your body from a high fat diet and in your bloodstream you're not reacting well to to more fruit rich meals so that's not the diet that we recommend you following short term or long term uh, occasional high go high fat gourmet meal in a restaurant say yeah, it's, you know it's delicious right so it's delicious but uh, doing it every single day long term no in terms of you building your health no okay so the the next one is a sprouted diet or sproutarianism i think they call it and this was uh, basically started by Anne wigmore a lady in america um, basically eating a diet full of sprouts, sprouted seeds, sprouted nuts, sprouted legumes. And grains also. And grains as well. Yes, and the, the thing with a sprout, sproutarianism or a sprouted diet or this approach is that you're still going to be eating a high fat diet because you can't get enough calories from sprouts. It's not, you just cannot eat 600 calories worth of sprouted lentils. It's, it's just not possible. So where will those calories come from? Fat. Fat, They absolutely. will come from more fat. And what's going to happen is that you're still going to be eating a high fat diet and you're going to be eating all those sprouts which are not that easy to digest. And if you've got a problem with your digestion, a lot of people come into this lifestyle because they have problems with digestion in my story as well. If you have a problem with your digestion, then eating a high a diet that is high in sprouts is not going to help you yes sprouts are good to include in addition to all the other foods that you you're going to be eating but basing your diet on sprouts is not the best choice that you can make for yourself and yes there are people who have able to restore their serious health challenges with this approach and mostly it's to do with the foods that they've excluded the, the, the processed foods, animal products, and they've excluded some other foods and they switched to a much cleaner way of eating. But is it the best diet for you to follow long term? Is it the best and the most beneficial diet for your body? No, it's not. Okay, so the next one is high carb raw food diet. So on this kind of diet, what are you going to be eating? Well, you're going to be eating lots of carbs. So, you know, 80 odd percent of your total calorie intake is going to be coming from carbs. So that's going to be from fruit because raw fruits, of course. Yes. Bananas, grapes, mangoes, oranges. All types papayas, of fruits. All types of fruits. So, as I said, it's going to be high in carbohydrates, lower in fat and overall lower in protein as well. Lower in protein, but still you can get sufficient amount of protein if you put more focus on greens if you include some perhaps protein powders in your smoothies and also if you include nuts and seeds now there are some pluses and minuses to this approach the pluses are that it's a really healthy diet and you are pretty much eating what you would be eating in we be eating what we would be eating in a natural setting so it's a diet that is adapted to our human needs to our biological needs we're getting lots of carbohydrates we're getting it from fresh soft whole fruit that is easy to digest and then you're including greens and you're including nuts and seeds and yeah of course there's a really really out of all the other options it's a very healthy option at the same time you can still make mistakes there and you can still be a bit too low on a too low side of protein because it's important to eat sufficient amount of protein and it's not right that it's not emphasized in, in this movement and if anything it's sort of made 
it it may look like it's it's not important at all you know you just it doesn't matter where it, where we know that it does and studies show that it's important for your bones it's important for your overall health and it's important for many other things in life so it's not that it's not important but you still need to pay attention to it and there are also certain myths that come along with this diet and one of those myths is that you don't need any supplements you don't need to supplement with b12 you can just eat mushrooms in the winter in the cold climate where you don't get the sun and not supplement with vitamin d and there are literally like no supplements that you need to take at all and that approach is not the right approach we've been coaching people on this diet on a high carb, high fruit diet for over 10 years. And I can tell you we've worked with a lot of people on this diet plan who bumped into deficiencies, who bumped into health problems, and we were able to help them. It's important to do this diet the right way. Okay, the next option is a high raw food diet. And we consider this approach to be more sustainable for more people, for most people. Uh, because a fully raw food diet, it's sustainable, you can do it, it's possible to do it long, long term, but at the same time, the, the ease of it can be a bit challenging for some people, because you need to have a lot of fruit, it needs to be ripe all the time, you constantly need to be shopping for fruit and planning and organizing things, and if you're a busy person and you've got kids and you've got lots of responsibilities and you're a professional person, it can get a little bit challenging. At the same time, we still think that a raw food diet, a high carb raw food diet is a great diet to follow, but there is also another option which makes it more sustainable for some people. And that is a high raw food diet where you still eat a lot of fruit. So you eat fruit till pretty much dinner. And a lot of greens a lot as well of in greens, your diet. Lots and lots, lots of, of greens, and leafy seeds, greens. And yeah. you look after your protein, of course. And you also include some cooked healthy whole food cooked options without oils and without frying and you opt for steaming instead of you know frying and you go for healthier options and perhaps you include some sweet potatoes or maybe include some root vegetables so maybe some people can uh, be okay with grains and legumes like Paul for example you have grains and legumes yeah not, not all the time sometimes I'll have them yeah and uh, that's that's an option that can that is still high in raw food, so you're still eating loads of raw food, probably 70% of your diet, 80% of your diet comes from raw food, but you're also including other options. And this high raw food diet, high carb, is the diet that we've been following for the last eight years. So four years we did a raw food diet, and then when our daughter arrived, <laughs> we switched to a high raw food diet because we find it more sustainable and also easier to get satiation for me when I was breastfeeding. And if you want us to help you personally implement this diet plan the right way, then look in the description section. There is a link on how you can work with us. And we will see you in the next video where we talk about what we eat in a day.